Hi, my name is Steve James, and this is the More Abundant Life Podcast. This is episode number 419, Prayer Life. An active prayer life is one of the things that I've seen that really helps in having a successful life. We can see some types of successful prayers. The lessons learned are precious in helping us to have successful and more abundant lives. I'm calling this teaching prayer life. We're getting ready to start a new year. Lots of people, when they start a new year, they they think, well, I'm going to make some changes in my life. I'm going to do things I was thinking one of the greatest things for any believer is to have a a really great prayer life, part of their lives. And in chapter 13 of Acts, I want to read the first three verses, and we've looked at this just recently, but now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon, that is called Niger, and Lucas of Cyrene, and Manon, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Separate Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, They laid their hands on them, and they sent them away. See, what started everything was they were praying. They were more than praying. It says fasting, which we've looked at. It it means a devotion to God. It means thinking about God, starting your day with God, and doing different things in your life to get closer to God. To know God better, like about our studying of the word, our reading the scriptures, taking classes or being part of a weekend in the word. Anything that helps us to get closer to God, a devotion to God and prayers. That's what we're going to look at this morning is the prayer part. And what they did here, they were together together. And with the Holy Spirit said, separate me, Barnabas and Paul, for the work whereunto I have called them. I think this is a good goal for any fellowship. I look at home fellowships, the fellowships that we meet at, as places where we want to see the word move. We think about, well, when we get people to that fellowship, We're all going to be there to help them with the things of God. And we're going to pray and think this way. It's part of our prayer life. On Thursday nights, we do what I call a prayer night and Bible study. The main emphasis is really on prayers. We want to pray for things that are going on, things we hear about and know about. And sometimes we get into God's Word. And sometimes we plan things, like what can we do to help move the word? What can we do to be a blessing to people? So we do all that. That's how I look at it any fellowship. How can we help people with the things of God? Take your Bibles and go to Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to look at prayer life. And I'm going to start in verse 1. And this is part of what I'm doing here. I just like to read sections of God's Word. And it says, Take heed that ye do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Likewise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Now this, uh, do not your arms. Arms means good deeds. Good deeds. You You don't do them before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. That's who we want to have the rewards of. Therefore, when thou doest thine arms or thy good deeds, 
do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Their reward is that they put on a show and everyone goes, wow, look at these people. They really do some good deeds, start hospitals, many things, and, and they get the glory, which is not God giving them the glory. And Jesus is saying, they have their reward. They got their reward. Verse 3 says, But when thou dost arms, let not your left hand know what thy right hand does. It's pretty hard, but we just do it. We just give. Most people today, when you can see on in the world, in TVs, and movies, in records and stuff, they all give each other rewards and pass, pat each other on the back all the time. The best picture, the best song, the best. And by the way, I'm going to give a lot of money to this charity. And my name is, and they let you know. You know what I mean? That doesn't seem to be the way that God would want to do it. Verse 4 says, that thy arms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. In other words, God's not going to hide what he blesses you with. Verse 5 says, and when thou prayest, the same attitude is going to be used in prayer. It says, but when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. Now the word hypocrite means an act. A hypocrite is someone that puts on a show. It's a show. When it comes to <clears throat> things of God, I always watch out for the show. I do. If I think someone's doing a performance for me, I step back and wonder. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the street that they may be seen in men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. See that? And I have been to fellowships when I've seen a lot of this. They just, in my way of looking at it, they, they're over the top in their prayers. They're not like prayers just from the heart saying things, but they're way over using elegant words and a little bit of a performance. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. When it says, go into thy closet, it's really talking about getting alone with you and God. Getting alone and praying, you and God. And God, you pray to him which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, ye pray, use not vain repetition, as the heathens do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. When Jesus Christ prayed, he goes, Lazarus, come forth. Pretty short prayer. Damsel, arise. Pretty short prayer. But he got right to the point. Some religions will chant in the name of the Lord over and over again. Hardly Krishna. Chant in the name of the Lord and you'll be free. Buddhist. Some Christians. Some Christians chant in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ over and over again. How many times can you say Jesus Christ in a prayer? As the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye had need of before you asked them. 
After this manner, therefore, pray. And Jesus Christ is going to give them an example of how to pray. He doesn't really want people to memorize this and, and do it over and over again, which they do, which is done, yeah. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. As an example, we're to give God great respect. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We'd like God's word, God's will to come to pass on earth. So we want that to come to pass on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. We pray for our needs and forgive our debtors as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. That's just an example of how to pray. Believing that God hears our prayers and we're going to get answers to our prayers. Verse 14 says, And if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. These two verses do not apply to us in our administration because Jesus Christ accomplished everything for us. So we don't need a quid pro pro. Verse 6 says, Moreover, when ye fast, be not like the hypocrites. Remember the actors, the show moats. Of a sad, sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. They look all hungry. I'm, I'm doing it for the Lord. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head. What it's really saying, clean up, look good. That's what it's really saying. Anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Reminds me of the teaching that God looks on the heart. He looks on what you really want to do and what you really want to accomplish. Look out for the showboats or the show, and we just want to do it, our prayers, was what I'm teaching on for God, between me and God, between you and God. I want to look at some examples of prayer, okay? And I want to go to Mark chapter 1. We're going to go to verse 35. And I think there's great learning in just looking at some of these examples. In verse 35, it says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. See, Jesus got up early. He got by himself. Didn't call it a closet, but he was by himself and God. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek thee. And he said unto them, let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. See, the people, Peter and the other apostles says, they want you back there in town. You did such great stuff. They want you. And Jesus said, let's go to the next town. He did what God wanted him to do. He got alone and heard God. And and prayed and went out and did what God wanted done. Go to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, and we're going to go to verse 1. I know you guys all know this record, but there was a certain man 
in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion, which meant he had a hundred men under him, of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and the one that feared God and with all his house, which did much arms, good deeds, remember, to the people and prayed to God always. He, he prayed to God always. And let's go down to verse 9. And on the morrow, as they went on their journey, and of course, you know, Cornelius sent the men to go see Peter. They were on their journey and drew nigh unto the city. Peter went up upon the housetop mm -hmm. to pray about the six hour noon. It's pretty interesting. He went up there and he became very hungry and he would have eaten, but you know that the food wasn't ready yet. And while they made ready, he fell into a trance and he heard from God. But the thing I really want to point out is he had some spare time and and so he was waiting to get fed and he took that spare time and watched a little TV. Well he got he caught up on the scores. No. He took that time to pray. He took spare time and he didn't waste it, but he prayed. He prayed to God. Whenever I see that, I go, wow, I guess I could pray more. Do you ever have these times you're just daydreaming? I do. And so you go, hey, I could probably make better use of my time. That's what I think about. But what I'm teaching here is prayer life or a lifestyle of praying. Look at verse 30. And Cornelius said, he's talking to Peter when he gets there. Four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. He continued fasting until that hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayers, your prayer is heard in thine arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. You see? God said, this is an answer to your prayer. He prayed in secret, but publicly, he said, hey, this is what you do. And he went and did it, and he got born again. I think that's just wonderful. Let's go to Acts chapter 12. And I'm going to start in verse 5. Just some examples of prayer. But Peter was kept in prison. So Peter's in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. In the church, I look at this in the fellowship. We do our prayer night on Thursday night. When we do, it's with the fellowship, we're praying. This is not the prayer when it's just between you and God. This is a prayer where we get together to pray. The majority of the prayers that we do are the ones between us individually and God. Our early morning prayers are while we've got a little extra time we pray. But sometimes as a fellowship, we need to get together and pray. And if we want to move the word, we'll do that. So prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keeper before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said 
unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. The angel's dressing him. And he went out and followed him. And he wist not that it was true. He didn't even know it was true. He thought he was seeing a vision of or how he's going to get delivered, which was done by the angel, and he thought he saw a vision. See, I didn't make it up. And when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod. And from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. There were many times early in the, my time in the ministry of the word that we would meet at some home and we'd have prayer without ceasing for different functions, different things going on. Two or three times a year in the first five years of, that I was in the ministry for different things. And there would be a living room in someone's home mm -hmm. or a den where they had out candles and uh, set up like a prayer room. And different people would come in one at a time to pray. I'm just mentioning that because this is not unheard of to me. Verse 11 says, And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know surely that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, the damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran and told how Peter stood at before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly confirmed that it was even so. And they said, Hey, it's his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he beckoned unto them with the, with the hand to hold their peace, declaring unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James. And to the brethren, tell everybody what's going on. And he departed and went to another place. Went to another place. Well, just a, another example of how prayers can be done and what happens when people are like-minded with prayer. Let's go to chapter 14. And we're going to start in verse 21. When they, and it says, and when they had preached the gospel to that city and taught many, they returned again to Lystra and Tyconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that is the right way of believing. Continue in the right way of believing. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, devotion to God, they commended them to the Lord on whom they had believed. They said, remember who you believed in? 
go out and do likewise. Oh, let's go to chapter 16. 25, verse 25. Paul and Silas are put in prison for speaking the word. And they even beat them. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosened. And the keeper of the prison, waking out of sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners have fled. He thought they were gone. But Paul, crying with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in, came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Pretty wonderful. And they spake, unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. They get, they spoke the word of the Lord to them. They spoke the word of God, not their opinions or anything else. It started because they wanted to move the word. They got themselves in a little pickle, beat, they were put in jail, and while they were in there, they complained like crazy about no, the no. injustice. This is, no, they did. They sang and prayed and praised God. The rest of the record goes on with that. I want to go to Acts chapter 20 and in verse, verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God. This is Paul talking to the leadership from Ephesus and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Mm -hmm. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessity and to them that were with me. Paul worked a secular job to take care of himself and the other guys that were with him. I have shown you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he knelt down and prayed with them. I can see the Apostle Paul saying, come on, let's take a knee. Much like a football coach might do before they go to battle. Come on, let's take a knee and prayed with them. We got things to do for God. Let's get out and do them. This is... An example of prayer. My thinking here, though, I wanted to show some examples of prayer and how it works. But you know what? We haven't gotten very far because there's another form of prayer, perfect prayer. I think we'll look at that next time we get together. We are a listener supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read. The episode is complete. So head over to stevejanes.com. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on 
how to read the Bible for understanding and power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless Word.